What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made this beautiful, delicious, smoky, fully loaded, crunchy bark brisket baked potato with homemade butter, smoked cheddar cheese, homemade sour cream on a delicious baked potato, which was also smoked. Coming up! Brisket! Everybody loves brisket, and typically it's served as a standalone item, you know, just meat on a plate with some pickles and onions. But much like bacon, brisket shines really well in other dishes as well. It can actually be used interchangeably with bacon in most recipes, because it's got the same attributes of being salty, fatty, and smoky. And one of the menu items picking up steam here in Texas lately is the brisket baked potato. But taking some leftover brisket and putting it on a baked potato would make for a pretty lame video. So today we're going to go all out, make our own butter, make our own sour cream. Of course we're going to cook a brisket, we're going to smoke the cheese, and it is going to be Delicious. This is a brisket. This is a 100% grass fed and finished brisket, which is something I've never cooked before, but it's still USDA prime, so cows must have had some good genetics. First thing we need to do is trim this up, and we're gonna start by removing this deckle fat. We wanna take it completely out, otherwise we're just gonna have to take it out on the board later. Next up, we're gonna take care of some of this fat and silver skin on the back. Not too much on this one. And then we're always gonna be rounding our corners, making sure there's nothing too sharp or jagged hanging off. Looking good. Hey! It's a big boy. Next up, take this fat pocket out, round off the old mohawk, taking a bunch of this fat with it. And then we start tackling this fat cap quite a bit on this one. Going for about a quarter inch all the way around. This knife needs to be sharpened. Again, we're just going for aerodynamics. Make sure there's enough fat, but not too much fat. Oh, way better. Chud scrape. And I've got plenty of videos about how to trim a brisket, so if you want a more detailed instruction on that, be sure to look those up. And just like that, we have got a beautifully trimmed up, nice looking brisket ready to get some rub. We're going with good old fashioned SPG. This is really two part 16 mesh black pepper one part kosher salt, and one half part granulated garlic. And because this brisket is particularly dry, because it's been sitting out for a little bit, I'm gonna hit it with a very small amount of oil. Just gonna rub that around so it's nice and tacky on both sides. Really don't need much, and I like to really rub it so it gets nice and opaque. Makes for a great little binder. And then we apply our rub. And as always, don't forget the sides. Rookie move. Beautiful. Oh yeah. Let's fire up the pit. Beautiful. And we're gonna rock this pit right around 275 degrees for the next few hours. Four hours later, let's check on this brisket. Get a little bacon going too for a friend. Nice looking bark on there. Looking real nice. I haven't touched it. No water pan, no spritzing or anything. And that's the way we're gonna keep it. And you can see we got some nice bark on there already. So we're gonna let this go for another few hours, right around 275, 300 degrees. And we'll check back in. While our brisket smokes, let's go ahead and get our cheese ready. This is an ordinary block of Tillamook sharp cheddar. But to make it a little more exciting, we're gonna smoke it. Busting out the old cold smoker here. We're gonna shut this thing down and let it cold smoke for the next few hours. The brisket is smoking, the cheese is smoking, so next up on the to-do list, butter. A process that we started last night. Welcome to last night. If you've never made butter before, it is super easy, really fun, and super rewarding. Not to mention, incredibly tasty. And it only takes two ingredients. Two quarts of heavy whipping cream, and two thirds of a cup of some wonderful cultured buttermilk. Give that a nice little whisk. And that's it. That's all we need to do. So now I'm gonna throw some cheesecloth over the top of this thing and leave it out at room temperature overnight. All those cultures from the buttermilk are gonna spread and grow throughout the cream, which is gonna give us that wonderful, thick, creamy texture and taste that we're looking for. So I'll see you tomorrow. 24 hours later. Let's see how this cream is looking. Ooh, looking nice and thick. As you can see here, this is thickened up very nicely. So what we've got here is a beautiful creme fraiche. And I gotta say, I've been tasting it here and there and it is super delicious, very tangy. And it's a win-win because if we let this sit again overnight, it'll continue to thicken up and we'll be left with some beautiful sour cream, which we're gonna do. But for the other half, we're gonna turn it into butter. So to turn this into butter, we need to separate the buttermilk from the butter fat, which you could do the old fashioned way by churning or shaking it up a lot. But with modern technology, it's quite easy. Oh, that is lovely. Maybe a little more. Ooh, beautiful. So thick. So 
because this mixes, all the fat particles in there are gonna clump together, and eventually the emulsion will break, at which point we can pour out some super delicious tangy buttermilk and be left with almost pure butter. Oh, we're dripping. And there we have it, nice and chunky. Let's pour out some of this buttermilk. And I tell you what, folks, this is some of the best buttermilk you can have. Very tangy. A stand mixer with the whisk attachment works really well for this as well. Looking good. Beep. Next step is to bust out our cheesecloth. Continue to get all the buttermilk out of the butter. And the final step for butter making is to rinse the butter again, just to extract all the rest of the buttermilk. Back in we go. Ice water. That I'm just gonna pour into here. And then we'll turn it on. And as you can see, it is still pretty milky. So we're gonna just keep repeating this process until that butter runs clear. And once all the water is running clean, this is what we're left with. A beautiful ball of butter, nice and cold. That's why you wanna use ice water, otherwise this will melt and be all nasty. I think we're gonna go salted today. We're gonna do about 1.7% salinity of salt. Perfect. I'm using flaky salt, just cause I figured it'd be nice. Add a little heterogeneity, but any salt would work. So now I'm just gonna knead this in. And you obviously don't have to use a butter mold. You could easily just put this in a bowl or wrap it in some cling wrap or something. But I thought it'd be kinda nice. And just like that, we've got two beautiful sticks of butter ready to go into the fridge to chill out. It looks so cute. After about four hours in the cold smoker, this cheese is coming off. It's got a nice darker hue to it and smelling nice and smoky. So now I'm gonna pop this in the fridge overnight. Ooh. This brisket is reading an internal temperature of 175. So we're gonna give it the old foil boat. Beautiful bark on there and incredibly hot. Oops, pinched the bark a little bit right there. Oh well, back on the pit it goes. Still gets up to about 200 degrees or so. Our brisket has reached an internal temperature of around 200, feeling nice and tender. So out it comes onto this wire rack. I'm gonna put it into my toaster oven. I got a new toaster oven that holds down to 120 degrees and it's about yay big. So it'll fit a brisket perfectly. So I'm gonna hold this at 145 degrees until we're ready for it tomorrow. I will see you then. <laughs> There's a snake in my boot. Look at these taters, Texas sized taters. I figured I might as well go big. Good old russet potatoes. What you want for a nice baked tater. I'm gonna give these a quick little rinse. Rinsing your taters is a good idea. One, because, you know, helps clean them off. They are grown in the dirt after all. But more importantly, that moisture on there is gonna help some salt stick a little bit better. And we wanna give these a nice generous salting just so they have some good flavor on the skins because we're gonna cook these right on the pit as opposed to wrapping them in foil. They tend to get kind of gummy like that. And what we're after is some nice crispy potato skin on here. We're gonna go around and prick them a little bit just so no steam builds up and explodes the potato skin. Let's throw them on the pit. I've got this pit rocking at about 450 degrees, door wide open for a really nice, clean, burning fire. Because we're trying to roast these potatoes, not necessarily smoke them. On they go. Actually, let's go this way with them. And we're gonna cook these until they are nice and tender, and much like a piece of meat, reading around 200 degrees internal. Looking nice. Oh, comes out so easily. It's like it's all buttered up. And there we have it, folks. Our beautiful stick of butter. And I gotta tell you, this stuff is super tasty. Very buttery. Oh, look at that. It's even got the little tablespoon markings on it. That's pretty cool. So the other stick I pulled out a few hours ago to let it soften. And I gotta say, it is some of the best butter I've ever had. Ooh, nice and spreadable. Super flavorful. Guys, definitely gotta check this one out. Mm. If you've never had cultured butter before, today might be the day. Next up, our sour cream. Another real treat. Very tangy, very flavorful and oh, so delicious. Mm, so good. Way better than any sour cream you're gonna get from the grocery store. On second thought, I'm gonna put it into a little squirt bottle. Ooh, this will be great on some breakfast tacos. I tell you what. And of course, our smoky cheese. Next time I make American cheese, I'm definitely gonna use some smoked cheddar. Mmm. Oh, that is lovely. Subtle, but definitely present. Mm. Hmm. These spuds are feeling real nice. Just a few degrees to go, feeling nice and tender. Probably another 10, 15 minutes. But right now, to ensure we get a nice crispy skin, I'm gonna take some rendered beef fat and just brush them all over these skins, which under this hot heat is gonna kind of fry these potato skins a little bit, giving us a nice crispy potato with the added benefit of the wonderful flavor of rendered beef fat. Beautiful. Probably another 10, 15 minutes, and these will be ready. Oh. Beautiful. Give her a little tallowing, shall we? Oh yes, please. Oops. Beautiful looking brisket, folks. Let's slice on in. Don't mind if I do. God, that looks really nice. Beautiful smoking, nice and juicy. Undeniable bark. Mm-hmm. Lean side, looking really great as well. 
Gotta love that crunchy bark. Yeah, I'd say that's a good looking fatty brisket right there. Best bite, that burn end slice. Gotta love that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's amazing. That is so good. Hard to beat it. Your classic foil boat brisket. Crunchy bark, nicely rendered. Good amount of smoke on there. Look at the way it just flops. Our potatoes are ready. Gotta have this little end cut real quick. Mm, perfectly seasoned. Mm, hot potato, hot potato. Looking real nice. Set these aside for a minute. Let them cool down. Cause we gotta make ourselves some chopped beef. But first, I need to admire this fatty brisket a little bit more. Yes, please. Come on. What doesn't look good about that? Whoops. Perfect slice. Gotta love it. So for our chopped beef, I'm gonna take some of these center cut pieces. Lean is looking real nice as well. We'll throw a chunk of fatty in the mix as well. Seems like a shame to cook such a beautiful brisket just to make chopped beef, but hey, that's the whole point of this video. So nice, beautiful. Oh. Sign of some good brisket right there when all you need is a blunt object to make chopped beef out of it. Boom. Ooh. Oh. Oh, nice and steamy. Gotta love that. Next up, a couple pats of our homemade butter. It's a big potato. It's gonna need a lot of flavor. We're gonna go in with a little bit of our cheese to get right down deep in that potato and start melting. Then of course, a nice healthy amount of our chopped brisket. Oh my goodness, what a sight. Then a little bit more cheese. Some of our wonderful homemade creme fraiche sour cream and top it all off with some freshly chopped chives. And that my friends is a beautiful barbecue, smoky baked potato as from scratch as I'm willing to go. And this is one of those moments in life where you really, you just gotta look at it. Mm. Ho, 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 ho. What a sight of beauty. I think it's time to dive on in. Excuse me, sir. Good Lord. I don't even know how to start. There we go. A Little bit of everything. Mm. Oh, that is so good. Oh, the cheese, nice and smoky. The brisket is phenomenal. No shocker there. Potato, perfectly cooked, nice and fluffy. Ooh, yeah, just got to that melty layer of cheese deep down in there. Mm. Oh, it's so good. You know, sometimes a slice of fatty brisket on its own is really good, but it's heavy. I feel like I could eat a lot more brisket in this form than I could in just meat on a plate. Mm-hmm. Butter and the sour cream, it just adds such a nice tang to everything. In fact, I'm gonna go a little extra on this one. It's so good. Brisket and sour cream, that's a great combination. And it's really nice not overpoweringly smoky. I was worried it would be because, you know, the cheese is smoked, the potato is smoked, the brisket is smoked, but it's all really subtle and just works perfectly. Yep, that's phenomenal. That brisket, unbeatable. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna do this more often. Shocker, shocker. Beef and potatoes covered in cheese with really flavorful butter and sour cream is good. Mm. Tell you what, too, this is a great way to stretch a brisket, you know? It's also great if you mess up a brisket because you don't need the best brisket in the world to make good chopped beef and you could feed a whole bunch of people. I know it seems like a lot of work to make your own butter and make your own sour cream, but it's definitely worth doing once. It's a lot of fun. I was thinking about it. Maybe next time I do a potato episode, I'll do a twice baked where I take all the innards out, mash that potato up with the brisket and the cheese and then put it back in. Woo! You know, that'd be good. This is a great thing to do with leftover brisket. And please don't go down in the comments and be like, leftover brisket, what's that? Ha ha ha. That's why you see it at a lot of barbecue joints because for chopped beef, you don't need top tier brisket. But without further ado, I think it's time for the official taste test. <laughs> That's all you get. Mama says you're getting kind of fat. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to make an absolutely perfect barbecue baked potato. Highly recommend giving this one a try. And much like all my other videos where I go above and beyond and a little over the top, you don't have to make your own sour cream or your own butter or smoke your own cheese or cook an entire brisket just to make a baked potato. But as I mentioned, if you've never made your own butter or sour cream before, it's a really fun project and it's worth doing at least once. But that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. It means a lot to the channel. Let me know down in the comments below what you want to see me cook next. If you do give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you so much for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.